Welcome back to Creative Harbor. My name is Jessica. In this video, I am creating a gray tone portrait of musician Sean Zuzek. I have started scratching a value scale that ranges from 1, the lightest, to 10, the darkest. I've always found these exercises tedious. However, it is an excellent tool, especially for beginners. It's the practicing coordination between your hand and your eye while trying to learn the gradation. The key to it is how much pressure to use. I'm one for just jumping in and getting the job done, but I wanted to quickly showcase this tool for those that may have never been introduced to it before. The balance of light and darkness is really what's going to give the sense of dimension. I've made two aches, one with soft light and the other flooded with light. Try this out for yourself by starting with black and white and then challenge yourself by using color to do gradation with. Photo credit of this picture is given to a Jonathan Wilner. I'm going to use my artistic license and remove both the microphone and the strap from this picture. I found that a really helpful tool is just by having a scrap piece of paper that you could lay down the colors, see how they interact with one another. It really comes in handy when trying to see how colors will complement one another. And it also gives a good expectation of how colors will blend. I'll be using the photo reference throughout the video as my goal is to try to get it as realistic as possible. So I've gone ahead and did the pencil sketch and now I'm laying down ink. This is always my favorite part because it's like the point of no return. My biggest goal is to ensure that the brow furrow does not turn into a uni brow. I chose to do Sean's portrait because he's an insanely talented artist, so please by all means go check out his solo work and his band Daughters of Mara. But he also recently shared his struggle of working a full-time job while raising a family, and I admire his hustle and relate to balancing responsibilities that take priority. I work in healthcare, but I consider myself an artist. That's my true calling. I've been using a mantra lately that goes, I can't fail if I don't quit. And it's pushed me forward in the darkest of times. I hope that mantra can help somebody else out. I have the Prismacolor markers with the chisel and fine tip. I wasn't aware until recently when a subscriber told me that Prismacolor also makes these with brush nib tips. So I can't speak in regards to those, but I'm curious how they stand next to the chisel. The larger end is great for covering up large areas, which you'll see me use just in a moment as I shade in his jeans. I mainly use the fine tip as it offers me more control and I'm less likely to make the dreaded marker streaks. They also make a colorless blender. However, on this piece, I'm using the lightest gray in my set to blend. I'm going to slow the video back down to show my thought process behind the shading of the head and neck. Because he's performing on stage, there's multiple light sources in this picture, and I see three main tones. We have the warm gray in 20%, which is number 100, 50%, which is number 103, is my midtone. And number 105 in warm gray is 70%, and that is my darkest tone. I prefer to start with the lighter tones, building up to the darker tones. I then will come back to a few areas using the warm gray in 20%, number 100, to transition those tones to be seamless. In his goatee, I use number 98 in black. It is very pigmented, which I love. And here's the world famous jelly roll pen that I swear I, I use it like a crutch. It is so satisfying to use. I just enjoy the highlights and texture that it helps give. 
Now I'm just filling in his t-shirt, trying to be mindful of leaving the gray tone area open. It's tempting sometimes when you're doing a solid color just to color in the whole thing. The skin tones I've been using so far are done in the warm gray. And here I'm debating whether to continue in the same color scheme. However, I opted to use the cooler tone uh, to represent jean material. I could stick with the warm tone, but I really want to stay away from looking one tonal with his skin. I wouldn't want his forearms to be the same color as his head, and eventually when I do color it in his guitar, I think the image would fall flat. So by adding in the cooler tones, not only does it represent the jean material, but it will also help it stand out a little bit more. I really enjoyed shading and texturing the jeans and the guitar. I really liked how his one leg is slightly lifted and his positioning helped cast a shadow and it assisted me in making the shape and form of his leg. I was slightly intimidated on how to approach the shading on his guitar because it's actually a really beautiful orange. I wasn't sure how to represent that in muted tones but I'm actually really pleased with the end result. By adding the highlights, it really brought forth the wood grain. Overall, I think the markers did a really fabulous job. I think if I really wanted to, I could spend more time, pull out my Prismacolor color pencils to really give some depth and add more shadowing, but I like how it came out. We're at the end of the video. I will go ahead and post a full picture at the end. I've posted this also to my Instagram, creative underscore harbor. Let me know if you guys enjoy these kind of videos. I was thinking of doing a mini series of musicians that I admire. Gary Clark Jr. and Dallas Green are on my list. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.